My start in large format photography kind of came out of a desire to have projects that I could do start to finish on my own. Being a filmmaker, uh, which is what I do for a living, uh, inevitably you're always working with crews and there's a wonderful collaborative aspect to that. But sometimes you just want to kind of like do your own thing, just go off and travel the country and just take photos and not have to have a million cooks in the kitchen all the time. Large format photography for me is that creative control, that creative satisfaction. I get to come up with a concept that really excites me and actually try and pull it off. I've been doing large format photography for only a couple of years now. I started with 35 millimeter uh, film cameras, just pick one up as like a novelty, just like, oh, that's kind of cool, you know, let's try that, do something different. Once that bug bit me, I, I was like, oh, four by five is next, you know, and eight by 10 is next, and you know, I'm even entertaining larger film sizes uh, right now, because I just love having crazy amounts of detail, resolution, you can just zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and just large format photography looks like real life. It's not nearly as simple as just pointing and shooting and clicking. You know, you have to learn how to focus with bellows. You have to compose on the ground glass upside down. Uh, you have to use a loop to find fine focus on your subject. And then you put the sheet of film in and you can no longer see your focus or your framing at that point. So you kind of have to trust that what you've done is gonna stay the way that it was in front of the lens. I would have ideas in my head, images that kind of would recur and I would work them into concepts. I think the very first one was just kind of the musing on the, the death of literacy, sort of, and so had some friends come out and we built a goal post rig and made all these books and glued them open so that when we hung them on fishing line, they would hang open just the right way and we, uh, we put some contact cement on them and lit them up and took a picture. When I got that picture back, uh, I was just like, it was just like a ha, ah, you know, moment. Like this is, this is what I want to do. I must do more of this, so. One of my biggest inspirations is a guy named Gregory Crudson, a large format photographer who had uh, endless financial resources, it seems. Uh, at his disposal, you know, some of his photos will be like a uh, $100,000 film set for one photo, you know, amazing. So I kind of started doing it in my own uh, small way. I built a little set in my driveway and uh, the city actually gave me a ticket right before I was about to do this shoot called Money Shredders. And I, you know, bought all these props and I painted the whole thing and got it all set. And there was like a little letter from the city saying that it was blocking my garage, which it was, but it's like, yeah, it's my garage. Like I get to decide, you know, if I need to, I'll park in front, you know? I called the city and I was like, hey, I'm doing a photo shoot. You know, this is what this is for, blah, blah, blah. And the lady's like, oh, that's fine. I'll give you a two week extension or whatever. So the, uh, take that angry neighbor that called. One of the biggest things about my photographs that's important to me is doing things practically. Uh, I want to make sure that everything you see in the photograph is actually happening in front of the lens. If something's on fire, it was actually on fire. We went through the extra work to actually do that instead of just photoshopping in some fire. And so it does look more authentic, but even if people don't realize it, I think to me it's important to know that I actually, you know, did the thing for real. I like the idea of my photographs for there to be something that has just happened or is about to happen in them. There's a, a story to be figured out by looking at the details. The goal of my work is to get people talking about issues also while enjoying beauty. The body of work of these most recent large format photographs is kind of centered around the current political climate 
and sort of exploring, you know, the plight of certain uh, people in the country uh, that are, you know, on the fringes or marginalized in some way or are struggling. Thinking about the divisions between the super rich and the, the poor and the disappearing middle class, I just had an image of a guy, just rich broker, banker guy who would rather cut piles of money to ribbons before she would go to, you know, the needy. And, the, and the, the poor literally just arms coming up from the floor, uh, you know, grabbing for, for the money. And the world is just on fire outside. It's just like, it's just like the world is burning and he would rather just destroy money rather than see it go to the poor. And that feels like how the attitudes are of some of these super, super rich people. It's like you have more than you could ever possibly need a million times over, why would you not help your fellow human being? So I wanted to make a statement about that, and so that's where the, the Money or Shredders uh, concept came from. Logistically, kind of challenging because, as I said, everything in my photos is practical, so I had to find a way to get, you know, 16 hands coming up through the floor. We had to find a way to block the setup. We got eight people willing to lay on the ground for two hours and put their arms up through the floor and we, we even measured you know their biceps so that the holes weren't too big and then the city outside the window uh, was actually you know laser cut MDF we put it on C stands and doused it in contact cement and uh, lit it on fire in my backyard almost uh, almost got the power line on that one. <laughs> oh the fire room this is a uh, don't try this at home. I would not do this again. Uh, fire is very hot and uh, much hotter than I thought it would be. Um, so in hindsight, probably would have done some safety things a little different on that one, but it worked out okay. No one died. Um, but yeah, we uh, wanted to you know go out with a bang uh, since the city had given me the ticket and I had to tear down my set that was blocking my driveway. And I was like, man, let's paint it red and burn it down. All right, and light it up. So Joe first. All right, yep, yep, perfect. Uh, make sure all that's going. Here we go, get out, get out, get out, get out. And action. Contact cement usually burns for like five, six seconds. And so we knew that and, you know, the guys had to get the whole room lit up and get out of there in time for me to get a shot off. I ended up only taking one photo because we couldn't do it again, uh, you know, so we lit up the room. Uh, they ran out, I got the photo just as she was getting up, like it was getting really hot. And so she like, she was like, I gotta get out of here. And so I barely got the photo. Uh, in fact, I didn't know until I got it, the film back that I actually had got it. I was like, I think we got it. But uh, sure enough, um, I got the film back and uh, my one picture that I took actually turned out, no light leaks, nothing like that. Sometimes in life, at least I feel like, um, you, you see this train wreck coming and sometimes you just sit there and watch and just, you see it happening and you just don't do anything, either through complacency or through, you know, um, uh, addiction or stubbornness or whatever. There's just, you know, this train, is this fire, it, it feels like you're in a room on fire and you just sit there and watch rather than doing what it takes, you know, doing the hard thing to like reverse directions and get out. The first five pictures that I did turned out uh, really great. And, you know, I was kind of riding on a high for that, but I realized that you know things don't always, they're not always gonna work out like that. I had another shoot at this, it was a pink trailer that uh, a friend of mine, Tessa, had, and I'd always thought, oh man, I'd love to do a photograph there. So I planned uh, one picture inside, and then I'd planned kind of a Gregory Kudzen-ish night exterior for the outside, and on the day, we got the inside photo, but when it came time to shoot the outside photo, which was very dependent on light, uh, and I just, I didn't have enough lights, didn't have enough time, didn't have enough power, uh, enough people, and, uh, and you know, the photo didn't turn out how I wanted it to turn out. 
now she's actually retired the, the, the trailer, I think, and moved into an apartment. So I don't think I could do it again, but that definitely, you know, taught me. Um, it's the, the joy of getting it and the despair of uh, losing the light. I travel a lot for my job doing music videos and things like that. So, you know, quite often I'll bring a camera and book an extra day or two to just go out and explore and take photos. So for me, it's kind of a therapeutic way to just, you know, be out in nature and do something I enjoy. That's what landscape photography is for me. It's not something that I intend to be great at or to show in galleries or, you know, anything like that. It's really just a way that I enjoy nature get to look back on, you know, my trips. I love having something to look back on and, you know, relive those moments. Oh, well, in my life, I'm a documentarian, certainly. Yeah, I take pictures of my wife way more than she wants. Uh, the dog has no choice. Yeah, every, everywhere I go, I document it. Mushy, say hi. Mushu, look here. Finally decided to start a YouTube channel and about large format film. Uh, landscape, studio, but also get my work out there for people to see and to just connect with people that are enthusiastic about film. You know, there's this whole resurgence of film and large format film that's, that I'm seeing right now and it's cool to connect with those people that are like-minded and are also passionate about this kind of stuff. It's called Positives and Negatives. We'll play on words with film. And life. Life has positives and negatives. So that's the name of the YouTube channel. One of the greatest joys, I think, in my life is creation. Uh, having an idea and bringing it to life. Especially when you're able to bring it to life in a way that is as good or better than you could have imagined. And large format photography, for me, is that outlet. It's start to finish my baby, my idea, you know, I don't make the film, but short of that, I went out and I carried this film and protected it from light all through the United States, exposed it to light at that exact moment, carried it through the dark all the way back home, loaded it into a drum in the dark, all protecting it from light, and then boom, I put it in these chemicals at a very specific temperature for a very specific amount of time, and that's what caused it to have the proper development. So maybe it's a $20 sheet of film or something and so before you click that shutter you think twice so there's just something that makes it so much more special when you finally pull the film out of the drum for the first time and hold it up and see it you know that's the kind of the moment of truth even though there's chemicals dripping off it and you can't exactly see everything uh, you know that moment of being like oh man I did it uh, is is the best Visit pioneer.org slash postcards to catch up on missed episodes and to find out more about your favorite segments. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropy, Mark and Margaret Yakel Julie on behalf of Shalom Hill Farm a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org.